Okay, let's get started with 1-2 applications involving linear equations. And we're going to actually split this up into two parts. So today we'll do 1-2a, and next class we'll do 1-2b. All right, so for the entirety of 1-2, we're going to do these skill objectives. But for today, we're going to cap it at these three right here. Okay, so we'll hold off on mixture problems and distance rate time problems for 1-2b. And so we are going to focus on the mathematical modeling process for this section. Okay. Now, this is going to be the key, these six steps. So I'll dive into those in detail shortly. But if you want to pause the video and get those down, you certainly can. All right, here we go. So we are diving into all of our word problems. The, when are we ever going to have to use these type problems? And here's our, our uh, steps for getting this done. So we'll start with the actual problem. We're going to go in two directions. First, we have words that we need to translate into math that we can turn into a mathematical model. For us, something like an equation, 5x plus 25 equals 100, something like that. Okay? We'll solve that like normal, and then we'll turn our math back into words. All right? So words to math, math to words. Those are going to be our uh, kind of overriding steps for this. OK. So we have six steps to solve a word problem. So oftentimes people have a hard time breaking down a word problem, what to do. So we'll do it in six steps. Step one, identify the question. That's always the first thing. What is the actual question? What do we need to find? All right. This is the part that some people skip over. We need to figure out what the important information we already have is. Okay? And then assigning a variable, one variable. Oftentimes we use x. Right? It could be y or j or anything you want. Okay? But the key in solving this is if you keep yourself to one variable, oftentimes uh, the information kind of comes out to you. That's the key. Then we'll set it up, solve it, and check. So let's see an example. During a camping trip to North Bay, Ontario, a couple went one-third of the way by boat, 10 miles by foot, and one-sixth of the way by horse. How long was the trip? Step one, identify the question. This is oftentimes the last part, and in this case it is. And the question mark helps us as well. How long was the trip? All right, let's make some notes. All right, so in here, we don't really care that it was a camping trip, and we don't care that it was in North Bay, Ontario. It's nice to know that, but we don't really care. But here's the important information. One-third by boat, 10 miles by foot, and one sixth by horse. All right, so let's take that information. So now we need to go words to math. So what do we do? We start by assigning a variable. So x okay, is something we don't know. What is x? Okay, in this case, x is the length of the trip. All right, the thing we don't know. All right, so let's set up an equation. So a third of the whole trip was by boat. So we could say one third of x, right? One third of the whole trip. And we went 10 miles by foot, plus 10, plus a sixth of the trip, one sixth x. And the whole thing equals what? All right? In this case, we don't know, All right? So we could say equals x. So that's the whole length. All right, so let's go ahead and solve this. Remember from last chapter that if we have fractions, we can get rid of all of them by multiplying by the least common divisor. So let's multiply everything by 6. Everything we see by 6. So now we have 2x plus 60 plus x equals 6x. We can make this 3x plus 60 equals 6x. Let's subtract 3x and get 60 equals. 3x, subtracting 3x from both sides, and we'll divide both sides by 3. We'll say x equals 20. Okay. All right, so let's check our solution. So on this, we have the whole trip being 20. All right, so if we go 10 miles by foot, a third of the way plus a sixth of the way plus 10, do we get back to uh, 20. So 20 over 3, 
and 20 over 6, we could check this on our calculator, or we can just say 20 divided by 3 is 6 and 2 thirds. 20 over 6 is 3 and 1 third plus 10, right? So 6 plus 3 plus 2 thirds plus 1 thirds plus 10, we do get back to 20. All right, so story's jacked out. Your turn. Let's see if you can do this. All right, so a family arrives at Walt Disney World parking lot to get from their car to the parking lot to the gate at the Magic Kingdom. They walk a quarter mile. They take a tram for a third of their total distance. They take a monorail for half of their total distance. How far is it from their car to the gate of the Magic Kingdom? So step one, how far in total? Important information. We walk a mile. Tram, third of total, and we monorail for half of the total. Okay, find our variable. Variable will be x equals total distance, and so we'll set this up. So one quarter plus a third of the total plus half of the total equals the total. It's our common denominator, least common divisor between four and three and two. How about 12, right? So to get from four to 12, we can multiply this by, well, I'm sorry, let's just multiply everything by 12. Get rid of all the denominators. So that's three, that's four x, six x, that's 12 x. We'll make this minus 4x minus 4, uh, 6x, that's 10x that we're subtracting total. We'll say 3 equals 2x, and so we'll divide both sides by 2, and so x equals 3 over 2, or 1.5 total miles. Okay. All right, so another example, let's find the numbers. Find three consecutive even integers, so the sum of the three numbers is two more than twice the third. All right, what's our question? Well, this whole thing is actually the question. Three even hence where sum equals two more than twice the third. Okay, so important information. So we have three consecutive even answers. Okay. And so we also need to say that the sum two times, uh, sorry, two more than twice the third. All right, so what's our variable? This is the key on this one, one variable. So on, for our variable, we're going to say x equals the first integer. Okay. This will help us solve this. So we have three consecutive integers. We have x. Now we can't use y. We have to just use one variable. So what would the next variable be? If they're even, you could say x plus 2. What's the next variable? It would be x plus Four, because if we were using these numbers, two, four, and six, right? Three consecutive even integers. To get from this one, we go plus two. We go from here to here. And to go from here to here, we would say plus four. Same thing would work if we pick 10 and 12 and 14, or 100 and 102 and 104, right? And so our whole total, okay, that sum, is going to be two more, so two plus twice the third number, two times the third number is x plus 4. So let's clean this up. x plus x plus x is 3x plus 2 plus 4 is 6 equals 2 plus 2x plus 8. So 3x plus 6 equals 2x plus 10. If we subtract 2x from both sides, subtract 6 from both sides, we'll end up with x equals 4. So our first number is 4, which means the numbers that we want are 4 and 6 and 8. Right? 
Let's check this. Is the sum 4 plus 6 plus 8, which is 14, uh, so 18, is that 2 more than twice this? 8 times 2 is 16. 16 plus 2 is 18. Okay, story checks out. 4, 6, and 8. Your turn. Find three consecutive odd integers. So the sum of the three integers is five less than four times the first. Okay, so here's our setup. We're going to say x plus x plus 2 plus x plus 4 equals 3. There's five less than four times the first. So four times the first and then minus 5. So five less than that. We'll have 3x plus 6, 4x and 5. Let's go ahead and add 5 and subtract 3x from both sides. Those cancel and those cancel. So we have 11 equals x. All right, so our numbers would be 11, 13, and 15. Let's make sure that this works out. If we add these all up, we have 34, 39. And then we're going to say... Five less than four times the first. The first number is 11. Four times that is 44. Is 39 five less than 44? It sure is. So those are our numbers 11, 13, and 15. Okay, second portion, we're going to do three sections here. The second one is geometry problems. So just a quick review of some geometry formulas you sometimes will need. For a rectangle, we have perimeter and area. For a circle, we have circumference and area. And for a triangle, we have perimeter and area. Take a few minutes and get those down if you need a quick review of what those formulas are. All right, let's try this example. A rectangle 24 meters long has the same area as a square with 12 meter sides. What are the dimensions of the rectangle? So a rectangle 24 meters long has the same area as a square with 12 meter sides. Okay. What do we not know? We don't know area here. Uh, sorry, this side length here. So we're going to say the area of a rectangle, 24x, is the same as the area of the square, 12 times 12. 24x equals 144. Divide by 24, divide by 24. Okay. And what is 144 divided by 24? Six. Oh, so many things open. Okay. So we get six for x. So we have a rectangle six meters wide and 24 meters long, which we knew originally. Your turn. Okay, a rectangle three inches wide has the same area as a square with a nine inch side. Nine inch. Nine inch. We don't know the side. So 3 times x equals 9 times 9. 3x equals 1. 81 divided by 3 is 27. Okay, and last section we're going to do here are interest problems. So interest is the amount you get for loaning something. Here's our formula. Interest equals the principal, which is the original amount, the amount you start and loan, times the rate times time. So if you leave it in there longer, you'll get more interest. If you get a higher rate, you'll get a higher interest. Okay. All right, so let's see what we've got here. Through a summer job, Morgan is able to save $2,500. She puts that money into a six-month certificate of deposit that pays simple interest of 3%. How much money will she have in her CD at the end of six months? Okay. All right, so we want to figure out the total amount. So we're going to say on this one, the interest is the principal, the rate, times time. That's our formula. Let's find the interest. The interest the principal, the original amount, 2,500, okay, times the rate. So for the rate, we're going to put it in a percent. A de uh, sorry, a decimal from the percent. So 3% is 0 0.03. 0 0.3, just as a reminder, is 30%. That is not what we're doing here. Just 3%. Points for 3. And then 6 months. For this, we always need to put it in terms of years. So six months is a half a year. Let's go ahead and plug this into our calculator. We're going to have 2,500 times 0 0.03 times 
Right? We get 37.5. So if we go to our answer here, the answer is not 37.5, it's 25, 37.5. How come? Because we said how much money will she have in her CD, not just the interest. So we need to say 37.5, which is the interest, okay? But she still has her original $2,500. So $2,500 plus the interest that she gained will give us our final answer. All right, your turn. Uh, no, sorry, one more example, then be your turn. So Teresa, she has a full athletic scholarship for college. Her parents have given her $20,000 to invest. Principal and decides to invest that money with an overall goal of earning 11% interest. So the rate is 0.11. Let's put some of the money in a low risk investment that has been earning 8% and the rest in investment that earns 12%. How much money should she put in each investment to reach her goal? Okay. All right. So on this one, the overall goal is 11%. Right. So, you know what? Actually, I'm going to pause on this one because this is actually a mixture problem. And that's going to be in 1.2b. So, originally we were going to do these all together, but this makes much more sense to do this problem tomorrow, our next class, when we're doing 1.2b. Okay? All right, so pause on this one, put this in your notes for 1 2b. We'll come back to it. Okay? There is the answer. See that next video. Okay? So we're going to pause on you trying this problem also. Okay. All right, so that's it, 1-2a, a little bit of geometry, a little bit of interest, and we'll finish up 1-2 next video. All right.